Hey everyone, Tin Man here. Playing some red black hero killers in constructed gauntlet. We'll see how this goes. Looks like we're up against another red black deck. Uh, doesn't have all the same lineup. It's running a couple different ones Necrophos, Urza. What else? I missed the other two heroes. Uh, Sven and Tinker. Okay, so uh, four of our different our heroes are different. We still have Bounty Hunter in common. But let's see how this matchup goes. So let's take a look at the flop. Um, Unfortunately, our bounty hunter is going to die to Urza unless he gets his Jinda, then at least he'll trade. We could hold on to Assassin's Apprentice to play on this lane and curve into the Urza to make sure we trade. Let's do that. Uh, it doesn't make much sense to play it here in this lane because it'll just die to Necrophos. And we've got double payday, so we want to preserve our gold and then double double, which is quadruple for those keeping track at home. Hopefully we can get uh, bunches of gold come in turn three or four, and then play a couple of Horn of the Alphas right afterwards. If our opponent plays like an Iron Fog Gold Mine here, which is his last chance to with a black hero, um, we can smash their defenses to get rid of it. But I bet he would have played it on lane one if he had the option, so. Um, no promises that uh, they have one. So yeah, I made a. I just recently made a deck tech uh, guide on this. I think this deck is probably one of the best decks in the current format. Uh, over the past couple weeks in the beta, I've had about a 75% win rate with it, which is really impressive, if I do say so myself. Um, for the deck, not not necessarily for me as a player, but uh, I felt like the deck has, has been very good. So we did get that high roll proc, um, so we don't need to curve into this one, so we can curve into the creep to help clear out the lane. Opponent has initiative, and if you play something like a Bronze Legionnaire, that's a little bit punishing. Uh, but if they don't, then uh, I don't really mind. Just picking up a free creep kill, and we'll have uh, seven gold. But once again, we don't want to spend that gold right away, because we've got paydays ready to double it. So we want to store it up for another turn or two. Hopefully get another hero kill. I don't want to buy anything here. <laughs> Although Apotheosis Blade is appealing, that is uh, not our game plan. All right, two creeps spawning in lane two. So one of them's definitely gonna go in front of the bounty hunter. No creeps are spawning in lane one for us. So if we put Legion Commander there, she'll definitely spawn in front of Necrophos, right? Because uh, my opponent's creep will go in the middle and ours will go in the last remaining spot, which is in front of Necrophos, which will trade off. Unless you also play Sven there. But Sven looks a lot more appealing in lane three. So that's kind of where I figured Sven was going. So now we'll get this trade. So that's nice. Uh, we don't want to payday just yet. Uh, we could gank somebody with Le or with Phantom Assassin. Uh, we could gank the Bounty Hunter and trade off. And then we have two black heroes next turn to double payday across two lanes. If we gank the Sven, it doesn't die. Oh, he's going to Relentless Pursuit away. Interesting. Wait, what just happened? Why did you shoot your own guy? That's... Okay, I'm not going to defend that play. I think that was a, a misplay from our opponent. I don't think he was supposed to uh, shoot his own guy, but uh, the game did just release, so we might be playing against uh, some relatively newer players, so this might not be the... Um, it's not like this is the most meta deck we're playing against, but uh, sometimes those plays happen, I suppose. Or it was just a, a simple misclick. He's going to town portal scroll to get out of it, Okay. Now I wish I had ganked. I thought, well, I'm just we're just going to kill this guy, and then... Well, why did he... Uh, you know, I'm not going to ask why why they Relentless Pursuit and then Town Portal scrolled. Let's, let's just move on from that. So we've got 10 gold now. Um, and that's all we're going to have. I think we want to probably gank on lane 1, and then play a Black Hero in lane 2, and a Black Hero in lane 3, so we can gank and then Payday Payday across the three lanes. So this shopping phase, we're not going to buy anything. But then next shopping phase, we're going to have 60 gold, at least, give or take. Um, let's put Bounty Hunter in 3, because that has the highest chance of trading with... Or actually, no, Sniper in 3. Bounty Hunter in 2. Because Sven doesn't kill Bounty Hunter. Or, sorry, Sniper. Sven does kill Bounty Hunter, and Bounty Hunter has the negative armor, so the cleave really hurts him. 
Uh, you could have like a weapon or something to, to make Sven actually kill the sniper. Opponent probably has to put Urza in lane one. Uh, maybe two if he's trying to get in front of Axe and reduce Axe's armor over two turns. Uh, then Necrophos in one. No? Okay. So Necrophos in two. He's just thinking Sven can hold down lane three on its own. That seems fair. Alright, so the way these all lined up, we don't actually... I don't think we kill any heroes as is. We could gank or we could... Play Iron Fog Goldmine. I think Goldmine makes more sense because we don't really need to gank anything just yet. I mean, we could gank to trade with the Bounty Hunter, or we can just Goldmine and just get that value right now. Because once again, we're going to pay day on lane two and on lane three. Opponent has just one equipment that they spent seven on, so it's probably a Blink Dagger be the most likely thing here. So the Blink Dagger could go on Urza, I guess. Uh, and then I'm going to trade with the Legion Commander. Hmm. That wouldn't be ideal, but eh, nothing we can really do about that. The only other option would, would have been to gank Urza, which I don't think would be right. Oh, Blade of Vigil. That's not a Blink Dagger. But uh, that's actually kind of annoying with the Fury Swipes, because it gives minus armor to Phantom Assassin. But okay. Typically when you see 7 you assume Blink Dagger, but uh, our opponent's mixing it up a little bit. Maybe they have a, a newer deck not quite as complete. And we'll just go to the combat phase here. Play the trebuchets. So we need to you know, not take too much damage on this tower. A Glody Catapult to just block and save 6 life. Can't say I recommend that play. Throwing away a card that he could potentially play it on a, a different lane that would where it would survive. All right, we're just gonna pay day first thing. So now we have 28. That's enough to likely buy a, um, a, a Horn of the Alpha, even on its own. You know, if Horn of the Alpha comes up, and then also if it's like a Revtel Signet Ring comes up first, we'll have extra gold, but we're gonna double this once again. So we're gonna be rolling in the money and then you'll see the, the true power of the stack. And Sucker Punch, ooh, that prevents us from casting Payday, I suppose, so. Fair play to him. Uh, if we don't see Horn of the Alpha on top, maybe we hold off on another, t another turn for it to get the Payday again. We don't have it on top. I've actually been ple pleasantly surprised about how good Shiva's Guard is. I haven't really found a great deck for it. It's definitely not this deck, but maybe like in like a blue control deck, Shiva's Guard might be good. I think we'll just wait and we'll just pay day again. Rather than, um, since we don't have a, we can't buy a Horn of the Alpha this turn. So when it is stalling our, you know, gold aggro plan, eh, somewhat well. But I still think we'll be in pretty good shape here. Okay, so let's track the Urza, because it looks like he's going to die this turn. Unless, I guess he lasers the creep, and then maybe we have to gank the Urza just to get him to die, and we get Buku Bucks on gold. And then actually, if we if we cash in this payday for, if we go up to like 50 gold and then double it, oh boy. That's going to be, oh, I guess we can't gank, because that would cost three. Oh. Well, I guess, so we won't get to double the track gold, but I think it's just, it makes sense we're gonna payday now, and then maybe gank the bounty hunter back onto Urza to get the 15. I think this makes the most sense. You guys have a lot of negative armor though. We're taking a bunch of damage in lane one. It's unfortunately curved into Axe. I guess I can duel and then gank. Oh man, we'd have tons of money then. 
I could put a stone hall elite in front of it and not gank. I feel like I want to cash in on the bounty though. So we have enough to buy like multiple horned alphas. Even through the rest of our item deck. A Glody Vandal? Sure. I mean, I'm still going to gank. Don't want to just trade with a Vandal when I can trade for 15 gold. Eighty-seven gold now, and let's just duel the bounty hunter. Clear him out and uh, make sure X doesn't take too much more damage. And we're still pushing seven damage to their tower, uh, which is important. You know, we want to get it as low as possible so that one horn wins us the game. But we're at ninety-two gold. We can probably buy all three horns. And with three heroes coming back, that's really convenient. We're pretty much given up on lane three. Now that's a pretty common strategy with this deck because lane three is just the lowest priority lane. You know, it happens last. Anything that happens there, you know, if it affects a previous lane, like a gank or an assassinate or something, it doesn't happen until next round, essentially. Like, they've already got to act on this, this round, like if you kill a hero. And if you blink dagger from here backwards, you lose an attack, essentially. So uh, that's not ideal. Vesture of the Tyrant is an interesting addition. Yeah, since we can't buy all three horns, I'm going to buy a Vesture. I actually considered putting Vesture in this deck as is. Um, for Occasionally against certain matchups, it's pretty good. Okay, let's... Um, we're going to want a horn in... Probably two horns in lane... One... Or one in lane one and two. So... Let's put, I have initiative, so I can put Sniper in lane one and immediately kill his Tinker, because of my active. You generally don't like to double stack red heroes, but I also want a, a black hero in lane one, because that way I can assassinate out of that lane. So first things first, we'll just use our active to kill off the Tinker. And I want to put a Necrophos in lane three, which is the lane we've given up, essentially. We, you know, they can have that lane. We're gonna just gonna crush these other two. So let's kill off Tinker, so we can't cast anything. Then we play Horn of the Alpha active. And then assassinate something. We can assassinate either of his two heroes on right lane, but we don't care about right lane. So maybe we just hold on to the assassinate for next turn. I can't play anything else. We didn't find a Blink Dagger in, in all of that, so I couldn't Blink to like another lane um, I don't think I need Vesture on anything I'll hold up if I if we somehow fall behind we need to put Vesture on something but I don't think we should we will put Vesture in this lane just to save three points or I guess we could Berserker's Call and just clear out all the Rift Raft here yeah, let's do it. I'll still probably put Vestra on him so he doesn't take any points of damage. We already don't have initiative, so I'm not worried about playing all the cards. And this lane's just dead, right? With the horn. We don't even really need to play the horn to kill this lane. Eh, I don't think it's that big a deal. I'm going to put it all on Axe, because if, if they find a way to kill the Axe... At least it comes back with the horn immediately. And I'll put the hourglass on um, Legion Commander just to deny card draw for next turn from our opponent. And then they can you know, do whatever they want and have fun on lane 3. And it's looking likely that next turn is the turn we win, right? Because we deploy two heroes back on lane 1. We just need to do 23 points of damage. Seems very likely. Considering we can assassinate one of their heroes. Or coup de grat. And they might even give us initiative, which would be really nice of them. So this is a lane where... This is the case... This is another reason why we want to win lanes 1 and 2 and forget about 3. Is that if we're ahead 
and our opponent wants to keep on winning this lane, they want to win it faster. Like right now, they're only doing two points. So if they want to add another creep to this board, they have to give us initiative back, which means we, you know, we ignore initiative on the first couple lanes because you know our opponent doesn't play anything there. We've already won those lanes, so we can like assassinate out of there with impunity. And then if they want to compete on lane three, well, suddenly we get initiative back for next turn. And if they don't give us initiative back, well, they're not really competing on this lane. Like, come on, they're doing two and then nineteen. That's not that's not scary enough to warrant uh, really any kind of response. Um, I think this is close to the last turn. Might as well just grab a, grab a couple items here. And we're just going to go all in on lane one. Opponent's not playing like blue, so they can't like annihilation us or anything like that. So we'll just need to um, assassinate or coup de gras. Seems like Urza makes the most sense because then it'll make the Thunderhead Alpha or Pack Thunderhead Pack attack straightforward rather than curve to the side. And our opponent's cards are locked through the Hourglass, so they don't really get to draw any cards this turn. And everything's coming up good. We didn't really need to ever smash our defenses. We didn't have a red hero here to kill the trebuchets, but it's not even that much pressure since we were winning the lane otherwise. I don't really want to discard a card, even though I could. Let's just assassinate him. And then I guess it's not actually fatal here. I guess there will be one more turn. Sorry, I didn't do that math properly. That was still the correct uh, assassinate target. Um, I think we're just fine as is. No reason to do anything else. I can just I can like time of triumph in mid lane and then blink dagger those heroes somewhere else, which is very powerful. I can actually compete on lane three now and win all three lanes. Go for that flawless victory. We don't lose any towers. I think that uh, makes sense. Uh, I mean, we could just blink dagger them back into lane one and have like four heroes here, two of which have time of triumph for next turn. Uh, another option we could do is we could blink dagger a black hero into mid lane and then from mid lane gank onto the right lane. That's another option. Uh, but I think just sending both of these two red heroes to, to the right lane makes more sense for our two blink daggers. This game is essentially won, but we just need to wait for our opponent to uh, deformalize it. I find it very hard we're going to not, uh, not win this game. So time of triumph, double blink dagger over. We can even heal up axe if we really want to with fountain flask, but I think that's a little bit of overkill. He's already at 14 with nine armor. Blink that. And that's the value of having, that's the power of having double payday, I'll say. Double payday is a little bit high roll on this deck. You know, you don't always even get one, let alone two. But when you do, you get to have all the equipment, and that makes all of your heroes just big monster trucks that can't really be killed efficiently. And even if they do, well, I guess Vesture was out of the secret shop, but I kind of want to put Vesture in the main deck just because it it wins those matchups where your opponent also um, also can kill your heroes. Like if they coup de gras a hero. Well, it doesn't come back for a couple turns, but with a vesture, it'll come back right away. And Stonehall Elite just to buff it up a little bit. Sven getting enraged. All right. I guess that does save him because they were going to get retaliated for six. Sven was. So that armor was necessary to save it. Even though we're stunned, we're still retaliating for, for six damage. Man, Time of Triumph is a hell of a card. You can see we're, we're about to win the game, but we're actually like pretty low on resources. We only have like, like Payday's worthless now, Revtail Signet Ring's not very helpful. Like we have basically one, two removal spells left. So like if our opponent had a bit better of a late game deck and we weren't so far ahead, we could potentially like run out of gas around now. You know, we're only going to draw two cards. We only have two removal spells, but they're going to have four heroes out. Um... 
you know, there's definitely the potential against a different kind of deck if we weren't so far ahead to to run out of steam right around now. Especially if they had something like an Annihilation to get rid of our Horn of the Alpha. But we got two of them, so. Easy game. It's it's very easy game when you have double paydays and, and can cash those both in. Alright, let's just make another Horn. Horn. Just in case they have like a, a sleigh on one of them, we need another one to really ensure that we get there. Oh, I guess he does have the Tinker Act to disarm one of them. Um, opponent is still dead to this. There's no reason to do anything. We could coup de gras or gank and do many things, but this alone is, is currently killing them. If our opponent like slays the Thunderhead who's not disarmed, we can still um, we can still like coup de gras the one in front of Bounty Hunter so we can attack straight ahead. Or gank gank it. Same idea. I guess yeah, we have to gank it. We can't coup de gras a creep. We could coup de gras a hero. Like the one in front of Sniper to deal to deal five. So lots of ways to fade on this turn. Heartstopper Aura, not relevant. And is that it? Is that it? That is it. And we get the win. Nice. So double payday uh, for 90 something gold. Turns out it's pretty good. So our opponent might not have had the most competitive deck out there, um, but you can see how, how powerful it is we, when we can just run over um, you know, other decks when we have our gold generation early. So check out the next video, and uh, we'll keep on running through this gauntlet. Thanks for watching.